Welcome everyone to Jermaine Toyota of Sarasota's Friday Football Fever. It is week two of the regular season and we've already hit some key district matchups along with some important games. And we start as always with our game of the week. A couple of teams with playoff aspirations. Sarasota at Palmetto. A lot of back and forth in this one. Sarasota's Hunter DeWitt launches one in the first quarter. He finds Sean Bain Jr. Great play there. First down Sailors, but the drive stall. Tigers respond. Chris Putton to Shaquille Harris, who makes a great move after the catch. Shakes off the defender, and he's into the end zone. Harris is a big time athlete. Sailors would answer, though, with a long drive capped off by a DeWitt QB sneak. Hunter DeWitt's a big kid. Nice O-line push there, and that's a touchdown for Sarasota. But the Tigers make another nice series and end up really close. Putton fires a quick pass to Harris. Another touchdown there. And then I know this looks like a replay, but every time the Sailors got into the red zone, they'd score on a QB sneak. DeWitt, another touchdown there, but the Tigers would claw their way ahead and they would stay there. Corey Crawford, a nice run up the left side, and he's gonna find daylight. Corey Crawford's an athlete. Palmetto's really loaded with athletes, and they went on to take control in the second half and win comfortably 47 to 28. SNN local news sports reporter Amber Stidham was at Palmetto tonight. A little bit of a seesaw matchup at first, but the Tigers came through and looked pretty strong at the end. Hi, Amber. Yeah, Adam, let's just say if you think defense is overrated, then this was certainly the game for you to see. Both teams came out ready to score. Sarasota's quarterback, Hunter DeWitt, had another solid game with both his feet and his arm with help from his right-hand man, Sean Bain Jr. But in the end, Palmetto was just a little bit too much. They ended up winning the game with help from Chris Tootin, who stepped in for the injured quarterback, Spencer Adkins, last week. He had a lot of help from Corey Crawford and the big man, Shaquille Harris down the field. We caught up with both coaches after the game and here's what they had to say. We're built to be a tough physical football team and if you if you gauge this football game on on physicality we played a good football game. They've got some great athletes that you know coach Marino did a great job of getting in space but uh, you know we were very physical and very very tough and every week and every every series they're going to get better and better. And, um, you know, like I said, we knew it wasn't going to be easy because we know they're very well coached and they have great schemes and they're going to execute those schemes. And, um, and you know, our defense has just got to continue to improve. And, and, uh, but offensively, yeah, we, we, we're, we're fortunate. We're blessed. And, you know, we know that here at Palmetto that we have some outstanding athletes. And Adam, it's good to know that at the end of the game, one of the assistant coaches said to the players on the sideline, hey, you better thank your offense for this one. And I'm sure they did. And it sounds like a lot of the fans are too. Not sure if you can hear, but they are having a big time party out here. Back to you, Adam. Palmetto ought to celebrate. Why not? It's a big win. Sarasota, keep your head up. Still a good team. Thanks, Amber. Let's move on. Venice didn't play a game in week one. Booker got crushed by Sarasota. Tornado's just hoping to hang in there tonight. First quarter we begin, Indians complete a little pass, and the Tornadoes just swarm all over it. Booker had some nice defensive plays early and really slowed down Venice. I think Venice was frustrated later in the first. Kale Yautzi fires to Big Dom Fenty, and watch Dom just lower the shoulder. Big fella, get off me there. Stopped at the five, led to a touchdown though. 7-0 Indians at that point. Tornadoes completed some nice passes on the next drive. Alex Riddle to Rashad Jones. Quick slant, first down, but Venice was too strong. Second quarter, Terry Polk up the middle for a touchdown and watch this cheap shot there. That's no good, didn't matter though. Venice cruises to an easy 55-0 win. Booker is having a tough start to the year. Lakewood Ranch made the short trip over to take on a tough Southeast squad first quarter. Seminoles return a punt. Courtney Allen's got some room and watch him look for a blocker. He's going to point and get one. Oh my goodness, James Barnes decleats Jack Cornoyer there. I slowed it down. That's a huge block. Touchdown, six zip Southeast. Mustangs respond with some trickeration. Direct snap to the big tight end Wyatt McLeod. That's a touchdown, 7-6. to six. He's got some breakaway speed for a big guy. Stangs take the lead. Seminoles get the ball back. They go to the air. Miles Braxton Johnson finds Jacob Sannon for the first down. Good catch there. And Southeast goes on to win a close one, maybe too close. 12-7 to seven is the final. All right, we'll take a timeout, but don't worry. There's plenty more high school football coming your way. How about the number one team in the nation at a Riverview squad looking to rebound? Plus, Braden River hosting a scrappy Northport squad, too. 
those games and more germane Toyota of Sarasota's Friday Football Fever coming up. All right, welcome back. Let's just dive right back in it. Manatee is ranked number one in the nation in most polls. That's a tall order for Riverview tonight. So is Trayvon Walters. Up the middle here. Scoots outside, gets himself a first down. Canes would convert. Cord Sandberg with the QB sneak, forging ahead to hit Paydirt. 7-0 Canes score on their possession there. And Rams had some nice plays on offense. Dominic Marino, he's certainly a dual threat quarterback. He goes with the run option here for a first down. Up the sidelines, drive with stall though. Manatee ball, Sandberg's gonna air it out. Look how far he flings this one on the run. Kind of stops there. Broderick Yancey, nice catch too, and that's a first down. Anthony Laurel, I really like him. He's so versatile. Finishes this drive with a short scamper up the middle. He can do it all. Takes snaps, takes it at running back. Slot back, receiver, 14-0, Hurricanes. Next Manatee drive, Sandberg dumps it to Juwan Pollock. Look at the high step there, maybe a little premature because he stopped before the end zone. Canes would finish it off anyway. Sandberg going to drop back and fade one to the corner, and Yancey just goes up and gets it. 21-0, Manatee at that point, and the Canes, I guess, would call off the dogs late and win it 49-7, final score. Hey, Lemon Bay is off to a great start this season. Manta Ray's got a big win tonight. Running clock in the fourth quarter. Manta's crush Fort Myers Gateway Charter 51-7. Lemon Bay 2-0. Bayshore hosting Port Charlotte. And the Pirates have been a pleasant surprise so far this season. Bruins get an early first down here. Jonathan Lewis to Tyler Bond. Port Charlotte got the ball back though and went to the air. Trage McClary flings it to John Wisner. Nice catch. Touchdown there made it 14-0. Port Charlotte is cruising. Ensuing kickoff was good for Bayshore, though. Check out Obi Tarwo. He's going the distance. Now, if you smell a delicious, crisp smell, it's a little shake and bake. Touchdown Bruins there, 14-6 at that point. And Port Charlotte hung on to get the win in this game, 24-22. Shake and bake, Ricky Bobby. Charlotte going down to Fort Myers to take on Riverdale. Third quarter, Tarpons' Dwayne Reynolds takes it back deep. Nice effort there, and the Tarpons would punch it in. DR Reynolds up the middle here. They got three guys named Reynolds. I don't know if they're all related on this Charlotte squad. Uh, Charlotte squad. 34 to 10, Tarpons lead. Riverdale on the next drive. Short third and two. Anthony Snyder's pass deep, and watch what happens. It's tipped right into the hands of Malcolm Smith for a touchdown, 34 to 18 at that point, but the Tarpons it wouldn't let it bother him. Very next play, Clyde Newton, he leads our area in rushing for a reason. Little cutback, breaks a tackle, breaks another, and then breaks away all the way to the house. 41 to 18 and the Tarpons roll, 48-25. An upstart Northport team hoping for a solid road win at Braden River. Second quarter we begin, 21-0 Bobcats and they're prowling for more. Phillip Swales up the middle, that's a touchdown. Late hit against him too, 28-0 Northport, and that is worth cheering about. Braden River had a few nice moments in this game. Good run here up the left from Cray Harwick. Absorbs a big hit there, look at that. He's a tough guy, he gets right back up, and then the Pirates pick up some nice yardage on a broken play. Quarterback Eric Schapaker keeps it up the left side, and he goes for a first down. Northport though, gets a huge win, 42-0, that's impressive. ODA goes on the road, taking on the community school of Northport. And a uh, nice defensive play there from the Thunder. They lost the first game, ODA did, and uh, this time a little bit better for them. Nice pass completion there for a touchdown. Thunder end up going on and getting the win, uh, so they are one and one on the season. Cardinal Mooney now. Let's move on. Officially 2-0, and Cardinal Mooney's officially dangerous. The Cougars go down to Fort Myers and get past Bishop Barreau 23-20. Nice start to the season for Mooney. Well, that's a lot of football, but that's not all. We got more coming your way with Herald Tribune columnist Doug Fernandez. Stick around. You're watching Friday Football Fever on SNN Local News. <laughs> All right.
right, welcome back. Herald Tribune sports columnist Doug Fernandez joins us now. Best part of the evening, Doug, was at the, the Manatee Riverview game. Um, it seemed to me that uh, Manatee must have called off the dogs a little bit in the second half. When did Canaan put the subs in because uh, the Canes just throttled Riverview? Really, I think Joe Canaan was subbing in the second quarter. Cord wow. Sandberg didn't play the entire second half. But listen to these numbers. 21 of 25 for 247 and three TDs. For Sandberg. For Sandberg. Yeah. It, you know, you got to hand it to Joe Canan. Last week, they beat Miramar. They got off to a slow start because Miramar's defense was stretching out their runners. Right. Second half, they went north and south. Big difference. This game, Todd Johnson had his defensive backs play off the receivers, didn't want to get beat over the top. So he had Sandberg just dump everything in front, and that's how he was able to complete 21 of 25 in the first half. Manatee walks a fine line because they got to throttle everybody as much as they can in order to keep that number one national ranking, but they don't want to get anyone hurt, and you know they don't want to embarrass anyone either. I don't think Kanan really has designs on doing that. No, I don't think he wants to embarrass. I don't know if this national championship, this mythical national championship, is, is first and foremost on their mind. Yeah. I think it's district, region, and then state, and whatever comes after that, they'll take. Cardinal Mooney. 2-0 this season, got a big road win down at, at Bishop Verrill. Mooney on the edge of making the playoffs. I mean, they could be a playoff team. They, they, they can. Coming off last year, Josh Smithers maybe turning that program around yeah. a little bit. Maybe he's got some talent. I get to see them this year, but I'm anxious to see the Cougars. Me too. Anthony Cayazzo, great yeah. running back there. Southeast gets a win, but it's a 12-7 win over a spotty Lakewood Ranch team at home. What do you make of uh, Southeast? Well, I, I make it that uh, coming off their kickoff classic, tough loss last week, tough loss. The fact that they were able to get a W no matter how it looked, I'm sure Paul Meckley is very, very happy up there to get off the schneid. Quickly, I want to give a shout out to Northport. 42-0 winners at Braden River. I know Braden River mm -hmm. has some struggles, but Northport looking pretty good early on this season. Yeah, you're going to give those smaller schools their props, and uh, they're finally turning it around maybe down there. And uh, I was under edict last week to smile a little bit more, <laughs> so that's why I'm smiling so Doug's much. Doug's smiling. Thank you very much, Doug Fernandez. That'll wrap it up for this week's edition of Jermaine Toyota of Sarasota. Friday football fever. Check out htpreps.com or the Herald Tribune for more. There's more local news and weather just ahead. Stick around.